Okay. And uh, so this week, we'll continue the coverage on the view. So particularly for this week, we're going to focus on the forms and inputs. So last week, we talked about Git. And so we didn't really work on our online shop. And this week, we're going to come back to the online shop and add more to it. So this is where we stopped two weeks ago. Uh, hello. Um, yeah, and this is where we stopped uh, two weeks two weeks ago. We managed to create the page displaying just one product. So we have this cat food. We have a picture, some description of the page. Yeah, and we also add an add to cart button with here. And that will be display, so will be disabled when the stock level is zero. So this is slightly different from the group work. We would show the amount of stock it has and in the checkout, but not decreasing the one displaying on the page. But once the amount people add to the checkout cart is the same as what you have in the stock, it will disable the checkout button. Sorry, to check out add to cart button. And then finally, uh, we had a checkout button. So we managed to add an icon and also has a number which shows how many items you have in the cart. And But if you click at the button, the checkout button, uh, it will only just show a blank page, which don't have anything on the actual checkout page yet. So that's what we will be doing today. And so this is one something similar to what we want to achieve by the end of this week. And so that's potentially what the checkout page would look like. And I guess we can ignore the formatting. Terms of, okay, I have a blue bar here and these things are aligned, the formatting in a certain way. But the, the main idea will be, we'll have these fields which the user can uh, enter in terms of checking out so you need to enter the basic information in terms of names address etc etc and then at the bottom we will have the details displayed as the user enter them so currently these are all empty so the names are empty the addresses are empty but as soon as you're starting to type uh, in these text fields they will show up here in the display so that will be something we'll try to do using V model, and which is another feature in view. Okay, and also we want to do simple checks. For example, only numbers are entered into the uh, into the ah zip code area. Okay, and so to to do this, we need a few things. And so we're going to cover them in this order. The first one is talk about V model, which allows you to bind the values from what user typed in in the text field or other input fields with the properties you have in the data components of your view. And then other things is a V bind and V4. The V bind is used to display information on the page or use the property of defining the view instance. And V4 is a bit different. V4 it allows you to uh, loop through or iterate through, say, a list or an array or something. And you can do the same thing for everything in that list or an array. And finally, we're going to talk a little bit about the modifier. So we're going to start with V model. OK. And so this is useful when we try to get the user details from the form, if you remember in the up half of the checkout page, user will enter names, address, etc. Okay, and uh, so when we do this in JavaScript, uh, what we do is we say document dot get element by ID, and followed by ID of, for example, the text field, and then its value would be what the user typed in. And uh, Vue.js have something called 
V model, just similar to say the V text, V HTML, or V on we covered so far. Just another features, and which do something similar, but also make it easier as well. So do more than just get the value. And so this works with all the input types. And so if you remember, you have different type of input elements. You can say type equal to text, type into text field, type equal to drop down or radio button, et cetera, et cetera. So this V model would work with all of these. Okay. And so one of the main difference between V model and what we did before, say get element by ID, uh, is say the binding is two way. So a binding means here here basically means you link something on the page to a property in your data components in the view. That's called the binding. And that the two way means uh, whenever one part or one side of the binding changes, the other side will change too. So that means, for example, if the user typing something in the text field, enter their name, and uh, then that values will be updated in your view model. So this is the same as a document get element by ID and then get the value. And but also the other way works as well. And if you change something or change the values in the in your model, for example, you change the first name property in your view instance. That will change what is get displayed on the page as well. Okay, so so long as one side changes either the view or the model, the other side will have the same changes copied. So that's a bit different from the document get element by ID. Okay, and sometimes if you don't really want this kind of two way binding, you can use view once. Uh, most of the time, V model would work just fine. Okay, so uh, so something close to V model, which we have seen before, and uh, is V bind. Okay, so as we already mentioned, uh, V model is mostly to get input from the forms, and the link or bind that with the properties in your data component, whereas a vbind is usually to using the values you defined in your view instance and use that value in the HTML page somewhere. So previously we have the examples we can use vbind to bind the source attribute of an image tag and to something which is stored in your view instance, which is say the file name of the actual image file. Or you can say build, you can bind the class of a div tag to some values or properties in your view instance. So basically any properties you can bind that uh, using vbind. And the things you need to remember is this is one way in the sense it's always the data comes from your view instance, the data component, and goes to and whatever attributes or elements you have on your page. So it's one way. Okay, uh, so we're gonna have a look of how the V model work. And so this is a kind of breakdown. So in this case, we want to bind one of the input elements. So we just say input. And then V model, and this is the view directive, or has equal to something. And uh, this something will be the properties from your view instance. So that just creates the binding between this property, which is order.last name, and this input elements. So assume you already in your data, you have an object called order, and it has a property called last name. Okay, and um, this is how this could actually look like. So I think uh, let's have a look how that's gonna work actually when you code it. So I'm gonna switch to my uh, 
the sorry the my Visual Studio Code, and this is showing the code from last week, I believe. So if I go using the live server, you can see this is what the page would look like. And if we click checkout, currently it doesn't have anything yet except a heading. Say this is a checkout page. If click and goes back. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do something similar here. Uh, we're going to create an input field in the um, on the page, and then that links to a property, an object in my data in the view instance. And in this particular case, it's going to link just to bind to the last name property in that for that object. Okay. Uh... Ah, okay, so in this particular example, we are creating and both the first name and last name. So that's two fields, and it's got get bounded to order dot first name and order dot last name. Yeah, and then in the actual data, you would have a new order object. And it would have first name and the last name, which will be used to store whatever user typed in in these two text fields here, the V input. Okay. And so actually when I write the code, I probably want to create the the data property first. So I'm gonna in my code. I go to my, this is my data section of my view instance. So now I have a new an object or just called order and it will have two attributes. So there'll be more, I'm going to add it later. So the first one or the first property of my order object will be called the first name and you can, you probably would imagine the next one is uh, last name. So currently the both the values are empty. Okay. And so once we defined these properties in the data, then we can use that in our code. So first we have to go back to find out the part of the display or the page for the checkout, if you remember. So we have the V else here. So only when the show product is false, we will show this part. But currently it's empty. We only have a heading with nothing else. So what we're going to do is we're going to add two input fields, uh, one for the first name and the other one for the last name. And so we could do just say input, um, just input. And I we say v model and they say equal to order dot first name. So that's the order object we just created, and this will link that input um, to the first name. Okay, I can save now. And if you go here, uh, and if you click check out. So you should see a text field. Whatever we typed in will be linked to the view object, which we can see here. Uh, if we go, okay, let's put it at the bottom and let's go to the view panel. And this is our view object. And you can see we have the order object here. And it has two properties, first name and last name. So this one so far is only linked to first name as we're typing. So if we're typing something here, and uh, you can see the first name here, it's got updated. Okay, so it's working. Now, now it's working. And just to mention, this is two-way binding. So if you edit the values here, so if I type in first name now equal to Kai, and I click save, and you can see the values here changes as well. Yeah, so that's a two-way binding. 
Okay, so obviously this is not very intuitive. The people don't quite know what they meant to, to put in. So that's why uh, we also have this part in our code uh, to show some text, uh, just to prompt the user what to type in there. And in this particular case, I put this one in a paragraph. So they will form, so whatever after that will start with a new line. So I'm going to do that in my code now. So improve my page a little bit. So I do a P paragraph, then I have the, uh, to improve the formatting a bit. Now before this, I'm going to type in a prompt, say this is meant to be your first name. Okay, and then I save the page. So this is what, what it looks like now. Uh, let me close this part or make it smaller. And now if we click it, go check out, you can see first name and there's a field and the user can type in the name here. Okay, so I've done that part now and I'm going to do the same to do a one for strong one text field for last name as well. The model, and this time I want to link this one to all the dot uh, last name. Okay, and you can see the page here is automatically refreshed already. And if we click checkout button, you can see okay, the second field comes out as well last name. And we probably can do the same. So now if I type in something in my last name, and you can see here it's changing already. Okay, so now we this is working. Okay, and so we are making some small progress in terms for our checkout page. We have the text field. Ah, uh, one thing to mention in here. So when you use this, you don't even to specify the type of input. Usually you have to say type equal to text or text field or something. So by default, it becomes a text field like this. Okay, and we can now go back to the slides. So now we have done this. And similarly, you can imagine you can create and the field for other things like uh, say address, postcode, etc., etc. It can work the same way. Yeah. Ah, okay. And so another thing we can do because uh, the me model allows you to get to the update in real time in the sense whenever the user changes the input in the text field and uh, the values will change accordingly so you can actually display the information below what the user entered and those those will change as soon as the user typed in or make changes in the input field Okay, um, so, so what we're gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to add something at the bottom now. So as soon as you are typing things here on the top, uh, the information will display here, updated here. Okay, so we're gonna just do the first name and the last name so far, and we can add other attributes a little bit later. So again, let's go back to my code so th in this case i'm going to create a new section again still inside the my inside the code for my checkout page and this we're going to call this a uh, give it a title called order information and then you can see in our page uh, we have order information and uh, under order information, we're going to just display the different attributes. You can display the first name, last name, etc. etc. So I'll do a paragraph, and this will be the first name. Okay, and I'm going to use double curly bracket, and it will show us the order dot first name. So you probably know by now that 
the double curly bracket is similar to the V text, I think. And then the order dot first name is the first name property of my order object. I can do the same for the last as well. Maybe this will be faster. So a quick question. Yeah. Uh, in the line 35, uh, in the div v else, you, why do we need to use v else? Like, uh, without that, we can't use the v model then? No, no, no. Th this part, v else, is not about the checkout page. Or this is the part where you decide. Oh, yeah, uh, okay, okay, yeah, exactly. Okay. No. Okay. So when we do this switching, mm -hmm. that's what the yeah. v else does. Yeah, that's Let's from the ahead. last week. It's not related to v model itself. Yeah, exactly. I just, I was just, just noticing. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's get back here. So we're going to do another one, which is the last name. And I want to, this one bind to my last name in the order property. Okay. Uh, again, if we come, actually, come back to this page here. Uh, we can do checkout. We can see we have first name and last name and currently they are not doing I don't have any value because by default it's empty but as soon as I starting to type I can see Kai and you can see this part changes and this is my last name and if I make changes you can see it's all changed in real time yeah so what happens is as soon as I start typing here it updates the was with my last name property of in my view instance. And this change got picked up here where it would show the values here. That's why you get this real time update as you goes on. Okay. So this can be quite useful. This is actually will be not so easy to do if you're just using the plain JavaScript to update in real time as the user types in. Okay, uh, let's get back to the, our slides so we mentioned, and we want to add a few other things. And so we want to add address, so that uh, captures the address or enters the address of the user, including the city. So the address probably is the street address and states Okay, the state here is slightly different. So we want to record and state as a drop down list. So you can see this is a, a select element, uh, no longer an input element anymore. And finally, we have a zip code. So that's American. So they, don't, they use zip code instead of postal code. And then again, this is using an input element and we link that to the order.zip property okay so i'm going to just add these to my um page now okay uh, let's go so the first one so basically just more fields here for me and the first one is strong so this would be a an input uh, i wish there's a v model uh, this will be order dot address and instead of type this will be v model okay and so that should add and then i can do the same or show the pp strong plus input okay so this is the what i called emmet so what it does is does a p and inside the p it will have a strong and then input so you can see i have the p and inside the p have a strong and input so for strong this time i want the city so basically there's a label before the input field i want city and again input we don't have a special specialized emmet for v view yet so you have to type in order.city 
let me reformat it and see if it changes. No. Okay. So, so personally, I prefer to order it this way. So make it clearly to see, okay, uh, these are the two lines of code, which is inside the P. And in the slides, I put everything in one line, just mostly just to save space. Otherwise, it get too wide, sorry, too tall or long to fit into one slide. Uh, now we're going to do the state. Okay, Let's see if I can remember everything. So we have P and inside we have a strong and we want to have a select. And then inside the select, I want an option. And this time I want to one, two, three, four, five options times five. Okay, so hopefully uh, Emmet, which you can see here, which will record, ev create everything I want for me. Okay, so I think almost, I think. So we have strong, this is where I type in state. And in terms of select, we don't need name and ID, but instead we need V model. So I want to link to the order dot state in my object. Okay, and for each of the options below, I have to type them in now. Okay, the first we want to be disabled. That means we're not going to use that to select anything. So the value value will be empty and text displayed or can just call state. So that just means can give the user a prompt to say select a state, but this itself is a, not an option you can select. That's it's empty, sorry, it's disabled and value is empty. Okay, and so this will be AL. I think that's Alabama. I'm not very really familiar with the abbreviations of the American states. So I'm just gonna just do, ooh, as they are. I think I would have to um, remove this well, just to make sure it's the same. So there's another, say, quite useful features in Visual Studio Code. And you can select the next similar appearance. For example, currently you can see it highlights value equal to empty, this one and these ones. For this example, I want to just delete these ones. So I need to first select all the next three instances as well. So in Mac or on Mac, you, you use Command D and you can just keep pressing. Okay, now I select all these instances and just want to delete all of them and will be similar shortcut on Windows. And I just place backspace once and you can see now these are all deleted. Okay, uh, I just do one last one, and that's for the zip code. And we're going to link, link into order.zip again. So there'll be P, and inside the P, I want a strong and plus a input. Okay, for the strong, I just say zip code. And then for the input, again, we don't need the type. Really, what we need is just say link to V model and the value should be an order.zip. Let's see. Okay, again, let me just break this into multiple lines, which I think will be easier to read later on. And okay, and now if we come back here and look at our checkout page, you can see, oh, it got lots more fields already. And obviously, and I made a mistake by say, putting these fields under the order in the order information section. Really, these different fields should be before. But let me see at least, okay, these are all working. Seems to be, say, we have the four options for the states here. So let me just move those back up a bit. Or I just could, 
move the order information down. Okay. And yeah. Okay. That's much better. So obviously, if we start typing in the name, last name, etc., these will update. These ones are not linked. Okay. But the one thing I want to show you here, for example, if you start typing a zip code here, currently you can type in anything. You can see in your view instance, it automatically creates a zip property inside order already. Even we didn't do that in the code. So if we go back to the code and you can see here, this is our order property. Initially, we only have name and last name, and but view can automatically add in the property if it, implicitly because yeah, you are using, say, uh, where is it here? Say order dot address or order dot city. These will be automatically added to your object, order object, even if it doesn't exist. If I select a state, you can see the state to get added. If I add a city, then city add extra, extra, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And usually, it's a better practice. Don't let code to do this automatically for you, but you define all the properties you need in your code. Okay. Uh, so that's what we just mentioned. You can see we can use these different properties and address city zip, even we didn't define them in the data. These will be automatically added by view, but usually the recommendations is actually to do these uh, manually, so you explicitly know and what are the available properties in your code. All the people reading your code would know, okay, these are the things meant to be there. Okay, and so we can adding these actually to my date, sorry, order property, which should be quite quick. We need address and then city. And then zip code. And finally, state, which is the drop down list. Okay. Uh, ah, and again, I'm going to do it very quickly here just to sh show whatever values are entered and so they can show on the page. So, and what we need to do is similar to what we did here in the order section. So you actually display all those properties that have in your code. So we have, um, that's a paragraph, there will be address, um, this will be order.address from my order object, and then say p, oh, p city, and then I'll have order.city from my object, and I'll have a one for zip code and finally last one is for the state we are gonna have order dot state okay and hopefully this all working fine unless we have some kind of typo so let's Go back to our checkout page. Oh, okay, we can see all of them there. And if we check the view object, we can see under the order, we had all these defined. So if we start typing in, okay, maybe let's do this. Okay, so automatically fills in the address uh, or pick a state. State's got to show up here and zip code, zip code here, and so on. So, okay, so that means it's all working now. Okay, uh, so we currently up to 
here now so we can be able to create quite a few different fields and can display the information as soon as user make changes or updates here okay uh, i'm gonna try a couple of more things and uh, the checkbox and radio button and these are also two quite common ones so for example the checkout box and give you an option whether to ship as a gift so i guess you probably see that from amazon on the amazon checkout you have the option to and send something as a gift so obviously you want to didn't want to tell the people receiving it for example how much it costs extra and uh, say all the information those kind of things so we're going to provide that as also as an option uh, in our online site okay and then we can also add a radio button that allow users to choose between send to home or business address So basically give you a choice, okay. Uh, yeah, so these are the code and to create the checkbox and the radio button. So this part uh, is for the checkbox and you can see type equal to checkbox. That's why it becomes a, a checkbox and it's the same so this links to another property in our order object in the data called order.gift and order.gift and you say label so that basically is the text and but the difference is say it says for gift so that links to that's kind of link this label to this input box and then the user will be able to choose whether this should be shipped as a gift or not as a label okay and so we're going to add that to the checkout page now and uh, so i would do order.gift first I'll add that to my order object sorry just and for here you just need gift Okay, and then I can add that to my page. Again, I'll put use this as a, a okay as the input, and uh, I should get the label as well. Okay, but type this time will be checkbox. I need an ID, so it can be refer to later on and finally i want to link that to the order dot gift in my view okay uh again i'm going to put that break that into multiple lines so after that we need a label and this will be for gift and the actual text will be ship as a gift. Okay. And so now I saved this. If I go back to my page, I go to my checkout. You should see this option there. So the checkbox. And if we check the value here inside order, and you should see a gift property, which we just created. And as I select here, you can see now it becomes true and unselect it becomes false. Okay, so uh, it does not display here yet, um, but if we want, it's possible. We can show that information and the order information as well. Okay, uh, the next part is for the radio button. And so it's slightly longer. These are the codes for the radio button. So you still need input, you have to say type radio. And so that tells HTML to create a radio button for you. And this is how it links to our or shipping method, or we just call method in our view. 
okay and you have a label you can have a label as well so this is for home okay and then that's for the first option and uh, or the first option in the radio button and for the second option you do the same you have a different id and value but the v model here it has two links to the same property so basically these two v model need to pointing to uh, the same property in your view and you can have a label to do that as well so you need the p input plus label and then times two okay uh, i'm gonna add that now so this part is slightly tedious takes a little bit of time and so first we add a property here just called method so essentially that's our shipping method okay once we have that we can add the option here so we have a p and inside we want an input uh, plus a label for the input and i want to repeat this twice okay um so this is my first radio put button id equal to home so it can be referred to value equal to home as well but this value is the value that will be returned when you use select this option okay and it can be other values and then finally we need to link that to the property in view which is order dot oh, order dot method okay this is getting a little bit long now okay this label is a link to make the sure it's linked to the first option so it's display home I'm gonna do a similar one here you do the radio and this time I'm gonna call it business and similar for the value I'm gonna call it And finally, link to my view data. Okay, we have to use the same one as before. So we use order.method both here and before. And so the V label four, ah, V4 is. Okay. So that's everything. So now if we go to the page, we would have seen on the checkout, we have this option now. You can choose between home or business. And in the order, you would have this method should it change, depends on what user pick. If I pick home, and should show up as home here. And if we choose business, it should have, have business here. Okay, so that's that's that oh we are a bit behind now okay so as we mentioned before and um, this v model binding is two-way so you can and um, change the values in the view use that to affect what's display on the page so one thing you can actually just use this to set the default value for example, um, if you want to set the default shipping address at home, and you can just choose a set of value for the method in your code instead of just leave it empty, then that will be affected on your page. Okay, and so in our case, for example, here, currently, uh, if you do this, uh, let me refresh the page the default one is empty but if we give the method a value in this case i just call it home and when we save and then come back here 
check out, you can see home is get selected because it has now has a default value. So sometimes this can be quite useful and so the user don't have to select if the home works. So save user for one click. Okay. And finally, we can add the, so I think that's pretty much all the information we want. Uh, and then finally, we can just add a button, just place order, which is one here, and it will do a simple message that says order submitted. And so this is something you can easily do with JavaScript, just plain JavaScript. But in this case, I'm going to just do it using Beyond. So we're going to have a button called the place order. And when you click it, it will do something in this case call a function called submit form, which is very similar. We did before when we do the event handler for the add to cut button. So obviously we need to define this submit form function in the view. And in this case, it's very simple. I just do send that pop out a message says order submitted. But I mean, in the actual online shop, there's many other things you want to do. You probably would take all the information, actually make the transaction happen. For example, reduce the stock levels and start to charge the users credit card or online account for the amount, the cost of the the product they ordered and maybe start the shipping process, etc., etc. Okay, so in the actual world will be quite complex. For now, we just pop out message. Okay, uh, I'm gonna just do this button now. Um, so there's nothing really new here. So in, first, we need to add a message. Uh, I'm sorry, add a new method and sub submit form so this will be a function all it does do is just do an alert and order submitted okay and uh, then we can use that for our little icon here um do i put it in the bottom okay maybe i'll put that in the bottom and let's do a button and I call it submit order. And uh, the only part will be say, we unclick. And so we can also using the shortcut equal to submit form. Okay, um, so you can see now, uh, make it smaller, hide this part. Now we have this submit order button here. And if I click, okay, it should pop out a message, say order submitted. Okay, and so this is what we already covered and in last week, but now our form is more or less ready. We have lots of fields you that can enter and different things they can select, for example, as a gift or send to home or business and all these information is captured here and finally user can click the button to submit an order okay so that is what we want to talk about in terms of v model and different examples of different form fields and you can use in your input now we're going to move on to the next part talk a little bit of v bind and v4 so v4 will be something new VBind, we already seen that before. Okay, and so here we're going to using the VBind to change the values of what user to see. Okay, uh, so we didn't quite do this part, but in the previous one, in previously, we have the here and the user has option to choose ship it as gift or not. And then if we show that information here, it will show the values of this selection. So it will be either true or false. Maybe I'll do that first. So I'm gonna uh, 
add an option here. Um, ship as a gift. Order dot gift. Let me see if I'm using yep. Yeah. So once I did that this, now we can see you have a ship as a gift option and depends on user pick here and the values will change. Okay. And but sometimes maybe just showing true and false maybe is not the best more well, you want to show some slightly different messages compared to this. Uh, let me remove the column. Okay, and this is what we can potentially do using vbind. So we can customize the message. So what it does, is you can say, we're going to set the true value for this checkbox to order.sendgift. Again, so that's a property in order that could be a text string, but that will be bind to the true value for the checkbox. Depends on, or in our case, say the send gift will be a text string, say send as a gift, and then force value is bind to a different property, which is called don't send gift. Okay, and then you can customize the message with the B bond. So instead of sending either as a kind of more uh, meaningful message for the user. So we're gonna do that now. So, so first in the order, we need to define these new ones, uh, either send gift, uh, to say send as a gift. And then we have don't, I oh, can't use send gift. We show do not send as a gift. Okay, so once we define this, we can change the checkbox now, which is here in our code. So I'm going to reformat the input line of code. So make it easier to see because it's getting slightly more complicated. So this is still one line of code, but you can see I put each property uh, into one line. We're going to V model. Now we're going to say V bind true value okay so the true value here is a it's an attribute for the in checkbox input type so that's part of html that's not something created um, by view okay so instead of saying v bind you can also say true value without the v bind uh, that's just shorthand so order dot send gift and then I say force value. I'm gonna send this to order dot don't send gift. And hopefully when I select the options in the checkout form, these message will display it, or the values stored in these variable properties will display it, instead of just true or false. And so this is actually not that different, for example, from here. And um, if you remember, this is the part where you select either home or business address, and then the value here would define what the values will be returned when this option is selected. And you can just say H or B, and then instead of return home or B, it will return these H or B when it is selected just as you're defining the specialized values here as well. Um, so okay, let's do checkout. Uh, 
where was I? Oh, yes, yes. So the first is just to demonstrate the ship as gift. Now, if I click, it will say send as gift or don't send as gift. So it's no longer true and false. That's been changed. And uh, I didn't bind the, I don't think I bind, show the choice here. So we have to check the actual rule. And in the order, you can see the method currently set as home. And it's set as home in the default code. But here it's not selected because the home is no longer a recognized value for this radio button. The recognized value is either H or B. And then if I choose home now, you can see this is set to H and change to B, this will give you B. So you can customize the return value. I mean, in theory, you can also bind these return values to some properties in your uh, data components in view as well. But there's no need, similar to here, but there's no need here in this particular case. Okay, and back to the slides. Uh, just to find a place to put the little video. Okay, we've got about half an hour left. Yep. And so if you run again, now the display now is will be send as gift or don't send a gift. No longer the true or false. Okay, and similarly, you can change the return the values for the drop down list. So Currently, if you do this, select the state, you can see the value returned here, which is the same as the options. Again, that can be changed. Ah, okay. And besides and changing the return value, and it is actually even better if you can generate the states from a list, for example, an array, rather than hard code them in the an HTML. So what it means is instead of creating these list options by hard coding, say one, each one as an option in the HTML, you can use a view to generate the list of options and based on some other data, say the array or a list you have in the view. So this is where the V4 comes in. Uh, okay. Uh, so first you can still change the return the value using VBind. And so you can see here, it says, I'm gonna in, when I select this option, I want to return the value to be states.al. So the states, has to be an object in your view and AL will be the property of that in your view. Uh, okay, so this is my states and new things. So if I add that to my view object first. So now I have one more thing to add. So that's not an order anymore. So this is a new thing called the states. And in my states, it's an object. I have AL, which is uh, Alabama. AR, which is Arizona. So you might see these, if you're watching the US elections, California. And finally, NV is Nevada. Okay, so once I define this array, I can change the values of view bind. At least I don't need to manually type in instead of what's referred to a property in the states object. So let me find my, yeah. Okay, it's going to just be a bit lazy here. I'm going to do it at least at the same time. I'm gonna create, you can see now I created four cursors at the same position. I will type V, bind, I'm gonna bind the value. 
equal to and state dot okay and then after that it's gonna change so I'm gonna stop that so this will be al this will be ar this will be ca and finally this will be nv okay and so now we go back to our page okay you will see these options still the same but if i choose one instead of showing al it comes with alabama which is the value al key uh, in the state object in my view and similarly if you change ar choose the different one and see a and nv okay okay so next we want to improve this part of code even further in the say we have this list of states stored in the array data so instead of hard code say ar sorry ar ar in the option as option element in html we want to generate that based on what we already have in the data object okay uh, this is still the okay so that's what we can do using v4 so this will be probably the first time we came across v4 as again something new but the way it behaves is very similar to the for loop in JavaScript. So it will iterate or repeat through certain things. And so that's the syntax for v4. And this way, you can see we don't have to list all the options. Instead, the options will be generated using v4 based on the information we already have in the states object. Okay, and so basically this is a line of code which would replace what these four lines of code here. Okay, so first we have the option and the v4 is inside the option element. So that's the one that will be generated. Depends on how many times this v4 will run. So if it run five times, it will generate five options. If run 100 times, it will generate 100 options, object. Okay, and then, so the state uh, will be a alias. Okay, I think, I think they call alias. Basically, refer to the individual items in the state object. So in our case, this will refer, alias will be referred to each of these key value pairs we have in the state object. And the key is just key. Um, key just means, and this part is called the key and this part is called value. So that's the key. And then you can use alias. So this is similar to the four other iterations you have in the array or JavaScript. Okay, then you say what v bind the value equal to state okay so this replace uh, this part so you bind the value to here we typed in state.al and it will just the typed value to the state which is element here by default it will be using the value and then you have this one here, which just say show the key. So the key will be the options you displayed in the drop down list. And the values will be the value in the stored in the state. So as a result, this will create something exactly the same as before, but the code of writing this is different. So I'm going to take out these ones. So we don't have to make any changes in view because the data is the same. So we want to say we'll have an option object. And then first we're gonna using V4. We can 
so this is a more complex value for v4. It's not just a simple thing. So we're going to say we're going to have the state, which is alias for each element in the collection, and then the key in states. OK, so this stays here is this state's object. And the key will refer to this part, and the states will refer to the actual value. Uh, oh, sorry, did I pass that already? Uh, that oh, is here. OK. We're going to still say value. Oh, sorry. We're going to do v bind. Value going to equal to the state. So that state is this one here. OK, not the other ones, but this state, which refers to one element in here. And finally, in terms of each option, actually the text displayed will be the key. So that's this key here. Right? And then if we go back to our display, go to the checkout page, and you can see here, uh, still four, and you select one. You can see the Arizona there. Okay, and the main difference is now this part of the code you don't have to change if you want to update the list of states, add or gen change or remove one, and you only just need to change the states object in your. So I, I don't know if anyone knows any more states, but I'm just maybe typing some random thing. Yeah, and this is going to add it to my states. Okay, let's just call a state called a JS, and that's called a Java script. Yeah, and then now I saved this, and if I go to my checkout page now, and you should have a new state which is called a JS, and if you select, then it will show up as a Java script. So that's a more robust way, an easier way to Hi. create a list yeah um you, you know how uh when you click to the uh other page you show you know it says like al and there's just like abbreviations of the states yeah yeah what's the point why not just have the full name there oh yeah it's, it's completely up to you so if you want to and show just the like, full name here yeah. that's completely fine okay all right yeah and um, i guess maybe the easiest thing in this case for example, if we change where the drop down, so instead of showing key and we're just showing state, I think that probably should give you the state name directly, and you can choose you do that. Yeah, and that's just purely as just an example. We can do different things. I might just leave it as a state. Okay, how are we doing in terms of time? Okay, and probably we'll be able to finish roughly on time. Okay, I guess uh, the most useful thing here is the V4, and it can be quite useful when you have to repeatedly create a certain list of things. That's, for example, later on in your coursework, you need to create a list of the lessons, and instead of do one block or one div for each lesson, you can do a v4, which create a list of lessons for you using the similar template, essentially. But we're going to see another example of v4, I think, next week. Yeah. Uh, okay, and so you can see this will be the actually generated uh, HTML. So that's if you just open this. Uh, ah, of course, if we just do the elements and you select, oh, I have to go to checkout first and then select this element. You can see this is generated HTML code, which is generated by the view before it's get displayed. 
And here, uh, the value is still the same, but there's the different options for each option. The label for each option is different because we're using a state here instead of just in the key. And later on, so if you need to make any more changes, you can easily just edit the states array in view, and this will be automatically added. For example, this is already add one more, which is Alaska, which is AK. Okay, yeah, so that's an, another option. You can also do a four, V4, and without, the key in this case is a just only state. So previously we were using a bracket state comma key because we have two attributes. You need the bracket and then the comma to separate them. And if you only just use one, you could just use a state. And this would work probably as well. So that's something similar to what we did, for example, we can just say for state in states and we bind the value to state. Uh, we might not even need to bind value now because there's only one thing and they're going to use the states as the option. And then we'll go to our view page and go to the checkout. Let me, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, and now if we look at the state, you can see it's just a list of the states. If I choose anything here, it will show up here. Let's further simplify the case. Yeah, so it just says the key uh, in V4 is optional, and but it's usually recommended, especially if you want to use that. For example, as the label text for the options. But if not, you can always just use a state, which I say just use the alias to refer to the element in your collection, which can be an object or an array, and that also work. Okay, and finally, we're gonna talk very briefly about the modifiers, which is used for different purpose. So first is the number modifier, and what it does is change the types of the return value. So basically, by default, everything returned is as a string, even if it's a number. And then by using the dot number modifier to force it or turn change it into a number. Okay. So what you do is you just add dot number after the V model. So what I can show is currently, uh, if we go to our page, maybe still put it on the side, it will be better. Oh, that should be fine as well. And if I type in some zip code here, one, two, three, four, and you can see in the view, this will be already recorded. Uh, oh. Why I can't click the root? Okay. We go to my checkout page. I type in zero code one, two, three, four. And if we look at here, we would have inside the order a zip. It has a value of one, two, three, four. And but the point here is the one, two, three, four is actually not a number and it's saved as a string. So this is you can see actually it have a double quote along the side. So it's actually a string. So for example, you can also check this uh, in console. Uh, let me see what do we call our view instance. Okay, it's called web store. So if we say web store dot 
uh, I think it's order dot zip. You can see it says one, two, three, four, again with double quotes. And if we want to check the type, we can see, say type of this. Okay, so it checks, it returns the type of this value. And you can see it's a string. Okay, but obviously we don't want it to be string. We want to treat it as a number and you can do that in JavaScript, but also you can do that in view, which is probably easier is by adding the dot number modifier after the V model. So it says for this value, which you link to or bind with, I want it being a number. So if we change that in our code, so you change that way you create the binding. So there will be V model dot number and we save it. And then we come back to our page. Now it's all refreshed. And we type something again. And we can first check view. You can see inside order, this one now does not have a quote anymore. Yeah, that's all, another indication in this is number. And similarly in the console, we can again still do uh, type of web store dot order dot zip and that will show it now as number. So that's because we added dot number into and after the V model. So that's the modifier. Okay. And there's another modifier we want to quickly introduce is called the trimming that's used for trimming input values. So it can remove any space and before or after the text if that's what you want. And for example, when you're in, entering the first and last name, you might have lots of space before and after, and it will be recorded as part of your name, which is not ideal. And then if you don't want that, you can use dot trim, and then it will uh, remove the space for you. Again, there's something similar in JavaScript as well. So view provide this just to make things a bit easier. So we can just maybe just look at here. We can type in my name. So again, I particularly deliberately adding lots of space. Okay, so you can see the name actually will be recorded as this. So all the space before and after are captured as well as part of the name. Sometimes the user enter this by accident and that makes the data uh, then cause the problem in the data. So if I add dot trim to my model, then it will remove the space. Sorry, uh, let me go to the code. Uh, where's the name? Okay, and if there's a V model, and if I type dot trim, and in this particular case, it should remove all the space before and after. So let's go to checkout again, I'll do my route. So you can see in the order, the first name and last name. So I'm gonna try last name first because this does not have trim. And so all the space you can see is still there but here. And if I type lots of space, you can see the first name did not even change. And then typing Kai is there. And if you add more space afterwards, you can see this one doesn't change anymore. So it, all it does, so just remove the space before and after. Okay. Yeah, and that's it. That's all we want to cover for today. And so in terms, so this is the chapter four of the book and we covered the most of it. So you can either have a look of the book and or go through the slides later. Let me stop the recording now. How do I stop the recording? Ah, yeah.